my name is Matthew Swinnerton, and I am the Programs Director for Santa Cruz Works. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Santa Cruz Works interview series. So it was last week that there was the official launch of the Equity Access Santa Cruz County Fund. And to discuss this fund, there is nobody more qualified than the people I have today to, um, to interview. And let's get right into it. We have Peggy Dolgenos. She is the president and co-founder at Cruzeo Internet. And then we have Susan True. She is the CEO at Community Foundation Santa Cruz County. And Dr. Michelle Rodriguez, the superintendent of the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. Super excited to have all of you on today. So let's start off. I'm going to start off with Peggy. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to start off with Susan. What is, so we, we're all on the same page here, what is the Equal Access Santa Cruz County Fund? The Equal Access Santa Cruz County Fund is a way for community members to do something about the digital divide that's been exposed through the COVID pandemic. Um, it's a fund that is here to accept community donations that we can immediately put to use to close that divide. And um, it's, it's a great example of how this community has really come together in both the fires and the pandemic in that um, it makes all of our contributions greater, greater than um, its parts. Cruz.io has been doing incredible work um, connecting students to the internet since the start of the pandemic. Dr. Rodriguez and the Pajaro Valley Schools have done unbelievable work acting so quickly to keep kids in school since the um, announcement of the school closures. And the Community Foundation is now adding a place for more community members to get involved and to help. Great, thank you. So you mentioned Cruz.io, Peggy. Let me ask you, how did this idea come about? Like, what was the, what was the genesis behind this program? Well, as you know, uh, Cruzo has been an internet service provider only serving Santa Cruz County for uh, over 30 years now. And we've always been very concerned that there are parts of the county that uh, don't get the kind of internet that, that people need. There's just a growing inequity, basically, as we move to uh, different technologies. We used to you know, all have copper phone lines coming to our houses and everybody could pretty much get the same internet over those lines. But as things have moved to a market-based uh, uh, economy uh, market with, the, with telecommunications, um, we have seen uh, very disparate levels of investment in different parts of the county. Cruzeo has customers all over the county and that immediately worried us and has been a concern of us, of ours for many years. But the thing that worries us probably the most of all is that some students don't have access to what's to what's increasingly online even without the pandemic already there's so much work that students do online and we donated and worked with different organizations you know uh, the schools uh, put internet good internet service in their libraries and uh, various places that the students could access it but when the pandemic came, libraries and coffee shops and all the and community centers, they had to close. And so it, it really highlighted the disparity. So we immediately, when, the, when there was shelter at home, we knew that this was gonna be a problem. And we reached out to the County Office of Education and Pajaro Valley Unified School District. We found people there who were also very concerned, like Dr. Rodriguez, also very concerned that some students would not be able to do their schoolwork. They would not be able to participate in class. And so right away, we started getting our project together. How are we gonna get good quality internet to the parts of the county that just have not been built out to in the past? Great, thank you. Um, so Dr. Rodriguez, why create this fund now? Like what is the urgency of creating this fund? Yeah, so as was mentioned before, um, all of our students are, are currently distance learning. What we know is that um, internet has been a basic need for many years, um, but it really wasn't highlighted as a true equity issue, an educational equity issue until the closures of the schools on March 16th. So the school district first went through and said, okay, what can we do to help support this inequity that we have, knowing that our school district spans 15 miles. So our school district is 15 miles long. What can we do? So we handed out 20,000 Chromebooks so each one of our students have it and we've handed out 4,000 hotspots 
But what we found was the inequity still persisted because our students, although they had they had the device in their hand and they had the hotspot, it really wasn't the quality that we needed in order for them to successfully distance learn, right? So we know that the hotspot provides a level of support, but it's nowhere near where we really want it to be. And when we think about educational equity, we think about equity not only for the child, but the family and the community. And so for us, even if it if they had the hotspot, it really was just then nestled to themselves and to the student themselves and not the family and not the community. So Cruise.io did um, respond really rapidly and they started to get internet into the homes. And so when we think um, about quantity, we, we were able to capture that, um, but we weren't really able to capture the real quality of internet that we wanted. Um, and when you have 20,000 students with approximately about 7,000 students at the beginning that had no internet access, um, then that is a critical need. And so um, that's why this fund is so important now, um, knowing that no matter what, even when we go back physically to school, we'll still probably be on a hybrid. Um, and so because of that, um, our students will still need that access to the internet. Great, thank you. So since this is such a huge need, and like you mentioned, and saying that you know, the community should be involved in, Susan, let me ask you, how can the community get involved? We would ask that people um, donate. There's an Equal Access Santa Cruz County website that has a link to give to that fund um, right from the website. And you can also find it um, through the Community Foundation website, cfscc.org. Sorry, Community Foundation Santa Cruz County.org. But we encourage community members who care deeply about making sure that all students can be successful, that kids have a fair shot at being successful in school this year, um, to give what they can to support both the infrastructure that's needed um, so that Cruz.io can get internet to homes, and then also that we can subsidize some of the service for families who need that subsidy. Great, thank you. One more question, and this, is, this question is for Dr. Rodriguez. How do you feel this fund is going to have an impact on the residents in your district? Sure, well, I think it, it's back to um, what Susan is talking about, leveling the playing field, right? Ensuring that each one of our students um, are, is able to go onto the internet. We do synchronous learning every day. So we, just as I was in two schools a day and saw the students engaging in, in Google Meets, um, that they're actually able to do it. Um, so regardless of where they live within the school district, whether it's on Freedom Boulevard or it's it's up on Dolphin um, in Aptos, we want to make sure that our students have equal access so that we truly can live up to our commitment for educational equity. Great. Um, so really, I want to thank all of you. Thank you and your organizations for all you do for the community. You really are um, one of the many reasons why Santa Cruz is such a special place. So thank you very much for all your dedication and work for our community. Um, actually, one more question. Peggy, what's the website? Where can people go? I'm um, also, uh, the, I'll tell you the website, but also I just want to say it's the kids. It, you know, we have had some, uh, some interesting thank yous from the kids who have received uh, internet connections and oh my goodness, they are great kids. And that's the future of our county. It's very important stuff. So if you'd like to contribute and we would love to have contributions, uh, the website is equalaccesssantacruz.com. So it's just, all spelled out one word, E-Q-U-A-L-A-C-C-E-S-S, -S, Santa Cruz.com. Great, thank you. Oh my goodness, I would love to read some of those letters. I wish like those could be published somewhere. That would be great. We're gonna, we're gonna be putting them up. We have a video from a middle schooler who just touched my heart, you know, what she was talking about. And who knows, she might be the mayor or a county supervisor or a you know, involved in the school district herself someday. And, you know, I, I don't want her to have to be held back because she doesn't have access to school. You should follow her. Yeah, see where oh, yeah. she goes. Yeah, <laughs> great. Well, thank you, everybody. And we'll see you at the next um, interview. Thanks, Thanks a ton, Matthew. Thanks very much.
So I, I want to thank the um, Community Foundation of Santa Cruz County and Cruz IO for being part of our partner ecosystem and really coming, um, hearing the call of need for our students and coming um, to our support. Um, we frequently say here that we're one team, um, un equipo, that we can't do it um, without all the infrastructures that we have. And so I um, just want to really recognize the work um, that um, the Community Foundation of Santa Cruz County is doing and then also Cruz IO um, for that work and um, so appreciate them and the support that they're pro providing to all of our students, but specifically our vulnerable student population. So thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Rodriguez, for how quickly um, your district acted on behalf of students and for also bringing in other partners like um, the Rotarians and Watsonville and so many other community-minded groups to, to serve students. We all care so much about kids in, in the county. Right, that's so, and that's so true. Because Cruzio was just doing donations, and we were get we were getting to the end of our rope a couple of months into the pandemic. We signed up about um, you know tens of students, like a few dozen, and then we were saying, "Wow, we can't afford to do that many more." And then you know, City of Watsonville kicked something in. PVUSD was really uh, proactive, and now we have a way to do it for hundreds more students. So that's very meaningful. <laughs>